Scared, says our next guest, Captain Jeff Struker, the Army's top Army Ranger who has fought in every U.S. initiative since Panama. Welcome to KKMS Live, Captain Struker. It's nice to have you. Hey, Jeff Lee. It's great to be here. Well, Thank we, you so much. We appreciate uh, all that you have done for our country and how you've served, and uh, it's an honor to have you on the show. Thank you. So you were born in Fort Dodge, Iowa. You're up, uh, up in our neck of the woods. That's right. They, they, they grow them right here in the Midwest, don't they? <laughs> sure do. Well, we appreciate uh, your story. is remarkable. Let's talk about something that's the most high-profile situation in which you were involved, and that's the, the Black Hawk Down. In the movie Black Hawk Down, your role in the rescue was really highlighted uh, because you're the captain. You're challenged with rescuing the soldiers that were shot down uh, from their helicopter. How close was the movie to what actually happened? Well, you know, that's probably the single greatest question that I get asked about the movie in the book Black Hawk Down. Mm-hmm. And honestly... The movie is very accurate. Um, For a major motion picture, I don't know that it could be made any more accurate than what it is right now, and it not to be called a drama or a docudrama or a documentary for that matter. Mm -hmm. I was... um, In fact, I had a chance to meet the producer and the director and some of the actors before the filming, and then afterwards I watched the movie in a pre-release screening, and I was very impressed by how accurate the movie is. I'll tell you, that's gut-wrenching. Let Ridley Scott, the director, and Mm -hmm. Jerry Bruckheimer, the producer, know that I think they did the firefight justice. Yeah, um, the book really was, it came about because so many people were telling me when I shared my story with them, and my story always is, firmly centered around God and what Jesus Christ did in my life and how that got me through the firefight in Mogadishu, Somalia. And I tell people about it and how it helped me deal with my greatest fears. And ever since then, people have been encouraging me, prodding me along and saying, hey, would you consider putting this in a book? And finally, publishers said, look, we just don't have any real good information for, for folks who are really struggling with fears. There's not a whole lot written about it at all. And so the whole purpose of the book was not to chronicle my life so much as it was to show readers how I've dealt with fear, how my faith in Jesus Christ has got me through fear, and how I think it can help them get through whatever fears they face. Yeah, I mean, if you're able to get through the fears that you encountered, uh, your book, I mean, you've got a great deal of credibility, obviously, and your book well, highlights that and explains that. And it's something that uh, I think all of us should learn and read about or read your book, The Road to Unafraid. And again, we'll be giving away a copy at the end of the, uh, the, end of the interview. Now, how, well, can you just uh, describe just a little bit about the, in- of the events of that day? Because watching that film, I was like, man, I, do, I don't even know how you survive something like that. Well, okay, I'll try to give your listeners a brief overview of what the way Task Force Ranger conducted business. Basically, we were looking for Muhammad Farah Aidid and a couple of his significant leaders. And for people who don't couldn't connect the dots, the way that this mission evolved from handing out food to a starving country to the men of Task Force Ranger hunting down a notorious warlord is that he attacked and murdered 24 Pakistani workers, UN workers, while they were handing out food. Well, the U.N. Security Council met and said, we've got to, to remove ID from power or else this entire situation is going to fall apart on us. And so Task Force Ranger was sent to, to, to kill or to capture Muhammad Farah ID and bring his, his clan um, down and take them out of the equation and try to restore peace to the, to the country of Somalia. Well, on... October 3rd, it was a Sunday, October 3rd, 1993, we found two high-ranking members of Idid's clan in probably the worst part of the city. Mm-hmm. And it was the middle of the afternoon, and it was everybody's, the worst possible scenario for us, but they were so important to our mission that we just couldn't turn our backs on it or wait for another opportunity. So we launched a mission to take these guys out. Now, we put special operators and rangers on helicopters who flew to the target building, And on all of the missions that Task Force Ranger did, I led a column of vehicles, about 10 or 12 Humvees, through the city streets to the target building. And then we would take the target building down, generally speaking, load up all of the prisoners and take them back to where we were staying at the airfield in Mogadishu. Um, And that's generally my role in it. And that's kind of what I describe in the book, The Road to Unafraid. I can't do it. It's what you do right now that makes a difference. Nobody asks to be a hero. She sometimes turns out that way. <laughs>